Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu, has led other dignitaries to commemorate the nation's 25th anniversary of unbroken democracy with a military parade in the nation's capital, Abuja. Arise News correspondent Ferdinand Duroha reports. As since the annulment of what has come to be known as the most credible democratic elections held in Nigeria in 1993, June 12 has meant different things to different administrations. Like its predecessor, the Tinubu administration has chosen to recognize these dates as Nigeria's Democracy Day, as against May 29 when the military handed over power to a democratically elected government. This is to commemorate the democratic election of Moshud Abiola on June 12, 1993, which was annulled by the military government of General Ibrahim Babangida. This year, the federal government has rolled out the drums to celebrate the 25th anniversary despite the prevailing economic hardship in the country. At the Eagle Square, President Tunumbu joined other dignitaries to mark the day with series of activities, including military march pass by the Guards Brigade. Cultural performances, calisthenics, and other activities then followed. The climax of the celebration was the unveiling of the world's largest painting portraits on a canvas. Standing at 64 by 32 feet, the painting is a much younger version of President Bola Tinumbu. Coordinator of the painting says it was created by 37 different painters representing the 36 states and the federal capital territory. Some dignitaries at the event speak on the celebration. Today, 25 years after democracy, since we started democracy, these lessons is that the ideals that we encapsulated in the Farewell to Poverty, which was a title of the manifesto of June 12. I was part of the team that crafted that manifesto in 1993. The ideals espoused in that manifesto is what this current government, led by the president, who was an integral part of it, is implementing. The president was very clear in his speech earlier today and was very explicit. You know, it's about understanding the sacrifices of our heroes past and seeing that as a foundation upon which we can erect a sustainable developmental future for Nigeria. Uh, major lesson is to say that uh, in democracy there are a lot of things that you can. We have seen a lot of improvement in terms of human rights issue, in terms of also the freedom to express yourself. Some members of President Tinubu's economic management team urged Nigerians to be more hopeful. The, 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 the granaries have been opened up, the reserves have been opened up, food distribution is underway. In addition to that, as we know, we have revamped, we have rejuvenated, rejigged and revamped the direct payments to individuals in order to cover 75 million Nigerians at the end of the day. And that process has now has integrity, has transparency and visibility. And it's just a question of speeding it up, scaling it up. Leadership involves choices that sometimes are not pleasant, but they are necessary. And we have a leader who said, look, we are not blaming others. We are all guilty. But let's confront these realities. Let's confront our in underinvestment, which have made us unable to fund all the priorities in the way we should do, whether it is education, whether it is health, whether it is security. Let us put a macroeconomic, uh, uh, macroeconomic framework in place that will ensure that we earn the confidence of the world. We During his 2024 Democracy Day broadcast to the nation, President Tunumbu had pledged to ensure that democracy becomes permanently entrenched in Nigeria as a way of life, while urging citizens not to be weary, but remain hopeful for a better future. Ferdinand Duroha, Arise News. Joining us now on this show to look at President Tunumbu's address and the Democracy Day celebration is Chief Olusegun Oshoba, former governor of Ugo State, former member of the National Democratic Coalition, NADECO. Good morning, uh, sir, and thank you for joining us on The Morning Show. Thank you, Ruben. How are you? 
Morning, sir. Yes, sir. Well, quickly, I mean, you were, Good morning. You were actively involved in the whole of this uh, democracy struggle. 92, 93, you were uh, governor of Ogun State on the platform of the SDP. Uh, and then, of course, you've been there. Um, AD, uh, uh, ACN, uh, APC. You were involved in NADECO. You were governor again uh, from 1999 to uh, 2003. Uh, when you look back, 31 years, 25 years, how do we think we are fair as an elder statesman? Well, I think that we should be grateful to God for helping us to sustain uninterrupted uh, democratic governance for full 25 years. It gives me confidence that uh, we have reached a situation where the democratic governance is permanent in Nigeria now, and um, Nigerians have embraced uh, civilian government as against uh, military government. So I'm confident that uh, this uh, will continue to go better for us in Nigeria. Right. I'd like to touch a little bit on the commemoration that we saw taking place yesterday. And I'd like to focus my question on the symbolism around Democracy Day. Now, one of the major things we saw yesterday was the unveiling of a portrait of the president, which is said to be the biggest portrait uh, of that nature in the world. Uh, however, we know June 12th uh, to be commemorated and symbolized by Chief MKO Abiola, as well as other heroes and martyrs of the struggle for democracy. I'd love to know your thoughts on this administration's choice in uh, unveiling such a portrait and other symbolism that we saw yesterday. What are your thoughts on those? Well, I think uh, you recall that uh, um, the same Lagos State government in which uh, President Bola Tinubu is fully involved had done a giant portrait of MKO Abela at uh, Ikeja Interchange and then did a garden where there have been many major political rally. And therefore, um, I should believe that uh, M.K. Abela was the first to be honored with a giant uh, statue. And if you consider it the fact that President Bola Titumbu is the first ever progressive politician to be elected as president of this country. I, I was involved fully with Papa Bafemi Awolowo. And at all times, Papa Awolowo denied. He was the greatest progressive, the greatest um, visionary, Paul looking politician, he was denied. MK, MK Abella should have been the natural progressive to be president on June 12, um, 1993. It was denied and he died. He paid the supreme price for us to have this democracy that we have today. Uh, I see it as a symbol that uh, President Bola and Mayor Tinubu um, was actually chosen by God to be the president because if you look at his images, he was not supposed to be president. The party was not on the side. Substantial members of the then government, of which we are, one, uh, we are the same, the APC government, was not on his side. Obstacles were placed before him. A lot of people kept telling me, are we not moving towards another June 12th? I remember Professor Tujidari, all, all the way from America, used to call me and said that the way he, he is looking at the whole thing, 
uh, we are moving towards our other June 12. And midway through the <clears throat> announcement of result, an attempt was made to abort the continuation of the result in the same way as Abela's election was ab aborted. You will recall that President Obasanjo issued a very powerful statement calling on the President Buhari to stop the announcement and coalition of results for the election of uh, uh, President um, Chinubu, which was, and you recall that Wally Shoeka alluded to it, that our other interim, gov interim government had been put in place. And therefore, uh, I think we must thank God that it was, it was God's doing, not President Bola Ahmed Chinubu's doing, that he emerged as president. Mm -hmm. That may be the reason why the decision was made by those who made the decision to now do a giant portrait to, to reflect the travel and uh, challenges that he went through to make him emerge as the first progressive politician to be president of this country. Okay, sir. You keep using the word progressive, progressive. The truth is progressivism means to make life better. But lives have not gotten better in the last one year under President Sinubu. In fact, lives have gotten worse. As we celebrate 25 years, MQ Abiola said farewell to poverty. Under President Sinubu, the tale has been welcomed to poverty. How can we make the lives of Nigeria progressive? Well, we all are facing the challenges. I will admit to you. <clears throat> that things are not all right in the country. All of us must admit that. And uh, we all need to cooperate. I sympathize with Nigerians. When you consider the cost of transportation now, I keep wondering how Nigerians have been able to survive. Transportation has gone up as much as about 200%. Somebody earning 50,000 Naira may probably spend as much as 20 to 25,000 on transportation to work. How will he survive on 25,000 balance? For example, <clears throat> for me, I've had to add 40,000 Naira each as uh, allowances to my workers at all, at all levels, my drivers, my gardener, because I pity them. When I think about how would they survive under this current dispensation, so I agree with you. And that's why we are urging that the government must quickly set to this issue of minimum wage to ensure that uh, ordinary Nigerians can earn something reasonably good enough to be a living wage. Well, Chief, uh, in uh, President... Uh Tinubu's speech yesterday, he listed heroes of democracy. And that's uh, a subject we've been discussing since yes, yesterday. And we also made the point that the media and other groups in civil society played a major role. You were involved with Nadeko, you were involved in politics, but there were also institutions in this country. This day newspaper, for example, today there's a, you know, a report, a profiling of the various heroes, uh, including uh, this day newspaper, which in 1995, in the whole of that struggle, was actively involved. There were other papers too, uh, Punch, The Guardian, uh, me the media generally. Since this is your <coughs> primary constituency, if you could speak to the role of the media and what you know, uh, the responsibilities should be, because oftentimes we say people don't praise the media enough. Uh, you as uh, an icon in that profession, uh, if you could speak to how the, role, uh, the media played a major role. Of course, but for the media, <clears throat> I must tell you that the entire media in this country will be, will, will be commended for the role they played in fighting the, 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 the dictatorship of Abacha. As you have, you have stated the Guardian, Guardian was firebombed, the, the publisher, Alex Ibru, was shot 
and he didn't recover till he died. He, he paid the price for his paper, the Guardian, standing solidly for the democratic law. Point was closed down, as you, as you mentioned. Many journalists were driven into exile. Take, for example, Tell Magazine, the likes of Dosa, Igebo, um, Bayo Nonuga, Dari Babarisa, uh, Osa Director, uh, Akpo Sajere. In Tell, at that time, Tell became an essential commodity. I, 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 I recall I was in London. People were waiting in 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 uh, serious winter, waiting for air freight of uh, tell to arrive. Internationally, tell was there. Uh, punch suffered. Many journalists were clapped into jail. Many were sent into exile. I must commend the Nigerian media for the. Today's democracy, the, the pity is that people are not writing. I expect my colleagues to write a, a document. I have had to write uh, my thoughts on, uh, on the situation and uh, on the battle line. There, I have even told the story of how the DECO was formed. So I agree with you. It, it's unfortunate that we the media ourselves, we are not writing enough about ourselves and our roles in the democratic situation that we are enjoying today. Right. Now, let's talk about the concept of pan-Nigerianism, because I think it, it's impossible to talk about Chief MKO Abiola, the contribution that was made and what we saw in that election without discussing how powerful it was <clears throat> as a pan-Nigerian movement. Now, 25 years after, uh, we look at the democratic process and we look at the tension, the fragmentation that is becoming more and more obvious daily. What do you think is the future of pan-Nigerianism? Are you optimistic that as we get deeper into democracy, that the spirit <clears throat> will, will, will find a re-emergence? I believe so because um, the last election was one that uh, I couldn't believe could be a repetition of what really happened in 1993, June 12. June 12 was not supposed to take place. It was a day that was that had heavy cloudy day almost throughout the country, and yet there was no rain. In the case of the last election, a Muslim Muslim ticket was also, was supposed to fail. There was no fund in the country. People were dying to collect 10, 10 20 naira of their own money. There was no fuel. The country was almost collapsing. Uh, and Nigeria rose. You see, this is the thing that is resilience in Nigeria. And I praise them. And when you talk of uh, the spirit, for example, when Nadeko was formed, Nadeko was a coalition of democratic forces. The, uh, all over Nigeria, among the major members of Nadeko, the, those who the coalition that formed Nadeko, the um, CUU, which is a body, a body then formed by the likes of Ebitu uh, Ikiwe, um, Abiran Debussy Kanu from the east, Afeni Feni from the west, and it's competing for unity and understanding. And you have people like Aya O, Aya and Co. It was CUU, along with Mekora Sokuti, CD, along with uh, uh, Chief Enauru, uh, Movement for Democratic Reform, 
MFR, along with the like of Pemi uh, Falano, that came to Keda and Nigeria. In fact, when Nadeko was formed, I remember that uh, Bala Dambazao, a strong member and founding member of uh, Nepu, I think it was there in 90, came all the way from Kano. It was the oldest among those who formed Nadeko then. Lebaron uh, Maku, who was Minister of Information under Jonathan, was the youngest among those who formed uh, Nadeko. I have the list of the 59 members that formed Nadeko in my book. You have like, the likes of uh, Papa Jassi was chairman, uh, Malam Lawa Dambazao, a bit to Ikiwe, and to the narrow. Was, this, this, when Deco was formed, <clears throat> I'm sorry my voice is not too good this morning. In the residence of uh, Gerardi in Kadebayo on May 15, 1994, okay. in, uh, in the Kenya. In fact, Abela himself was not a member of Nadeko. He was in South Africa to attend the inauguration of uh, Mandela. It was when he came back that I took him to one of the beauties of Nadeko. Nadeko was formed primarily to fight the military out of governance and to restore democracy. It was not formed to fight for June 12. It was when Abela came back and was interrogated by the Nadeko members and was given condition, and he accepted all the conditions that he was ready to stand and fight, and he did. And he fought to death. I don't think we have ever found any Nigerian of the like of uh, M.K. Abela, and we may for, for a long time not fight the like of Abela. It was our own Mandela. He paid the supreme price. So the, the people that formed the Deco then, okay. I, I embraced June 12th. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. So, that's it. That, so I, 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 I have confidence. Okay. Okay, I, I mean, and it's, it's very good, you know, you stated this history. And for further reading, please go get Baba's book, you know, Battle Line. Uh, I, I've read that book. It's a very powerful book, you know. And please go get it. It's filled with a lot of historical material. And thank you so much for availing me a copy. And, you know, part of the history of Jun you're talking about, it's very instructive. The likes of Ibiti Ukiwe, you know, the great Ochaya himself, like, they, like, like we call him, you know, used to be second in command under a military government, under Babangida, but he decided to fight the tyranny of the military. And that was very commendable about what a China did there. But I'd like to ask you this. I hear this, sir. This punch wrote something recently. The punch said, abductions, the detentions, echoes of Abacha era media clampdown resound under Tinubu as a very formidable media icon <clears throat> in this country. Journalists are being haunted for doing their job. And this is in the same Tinubu's government <coughs> that fought, that the journalists fought for, you know. And this is the same Tinubu that all the civil, all this right struggle against the military, they fought hand in hand with journalists. He's also a publisher himself. And you are seeing all of this happen. Cheo Sani was talking about at the dinner yesterday that many people were still arrested from the NSAS protests. We are constantly seeing clamp down. It's like, it's as though, you know, there's no direct freedom. What's your take on all of this? And what would you advise Tinubu to do as regards to That's number one. Number two would also be about the last elections and the divisions that happened. It was very undemocratic the way the Southeasterners were treated in Lagos and other parts of the country. And people from other parts were treated. Although some people have also argued that, oh, people from the South who were not treated good in the East and all of that. But things like Oro that was being carried the day before election, the way people were disenfranchised in Okota and things like that. Is that not an aberration? to the inclusiveness a brother brought about in June 12. The two questions, sir. Well, you talk about journalists, yes. Uh, 
Yes, I do. As a journalist, I fought, I fought and I'm still fighting all my life for right to information, and I will always fight. I will always condemn anything that has to do with harassment, incarceration, and abduction of journalists. Unfortunately for me, when I fight, I get totally embarrassed by a lot of so-called bloggers. You, you and I, as those of us who are trained journalists, must know that we have code of conduct. Many of these people don't know anything about journalism, and the right is that are even embarrassing to us journalists. So let us take it from there. For example, there was a write-up that says that uh, but Jabi Amila had collected billions of naira from uh, uh, Sabi Yusuf, to the Sabi Yusuf, and collected many houses. I mean, you and I should condemn that. The treatment of we journalists is not something I will ever start for. At the same time, I will continue to fight that those who are who so-called journalists, some of them call themselves investigative journalism. They don't know nothing about journalism. They write fake news. I, I mean, there was a time they put up a news item on the internet where Macron was said to be giving apology to the colonial behavior of the, of the French government. And I was carried away. And it, it turned out to be a, a, a fake news, AI. They, they, they put the words into Macron's mouth. So uh, I, 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 I should tell you that I condemn any abduction. At the same time, you must, we must all uh, be telling the MPO. We formed the MPO, the Nigerian Press Organization, made up of MPA head, Dean of Editors, NUJ, to ensure that we have control, control for our people. So that we, we, we don't just write all kinds of stories fabricated this item so that you and I should fight those bloggers. I respect platforms like uh, The Cable by Salmon Kolawole, uh, Yomi, The Premium Times. These are bloggers who are trained journalists. When you see an investigated um, item on, on the uh, um, Along your me uh, uh, premium times, you you will be happy to be a journalist. Now coming to the issue of but, the but for your information, I hope you know that a premium about time the, journalist was arrested for his story he was still working on before he released the story. So all those platforms you celebrate, they are journalists who are being victimized. A premium time journalist was arrested no, 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 for a story wait, wait, that he had not even released. That was wait, working wait, on. Was that? Recently, this, when was that? this story was everywhere when, when was he that? was called to the police station to come and talk about a story that he had not even released. A premium time journalist, the story is there. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Uh, 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 Alon Yomi didn't tell me that. If, if Alon Yomi told me that, I, 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 will, I will start family against it. I can tell you that. So, are you saying that those carrying fake news internationally too? Should, should be accepted by us as journalists. They are the one that put us into trouble. And that, that's why I don't want any control of any kind. But at the same time, I must, you and I must fight to ensure that those of us who, who, who are true journalists, who are trained journalists, must defend our profession and must create standards. Now, I'm going to the. Sir, issues. sir, the story is here. Let me just give you for further yes. information. Yes. Police invite Premium Times reporter yeah. over yet to be published story. Nigeria Police Force invited Emmanuel Agbo, a reporter with Premium Times, over a land dispute story he's still working on, yet to be published. The story is out there. And, and five, did, five, that, 5 June that, 2024. That didn't come to my knowledge. It's out there. It's in public view. In fact, no, I, I can't in, in fact this story was carried uh, by the cable. I can't comment. No, no. So the second question, sir. I, I, all I, I of the th on. no, it's fine, sir. All of the things yes. that happened in Lagos during the election, the airport carrying and everything and all of that, is it not contrary to what happened in June 12th? You know, because we are talking about the last elections. Oh, I, 
APMQ Abuela election was free and fair and respected. But in Lagos, in the last presidential election, uh, in the last uh, election, governorship election, we saw a bobbing Kai Oru and all that things that like victimizing, beating people. That was not how they beat people in June 12th. Now, let, <coughs> let, me, let me explain to you that whether you like it or not, the last election, Uh, is one of recent elections that I respect. Why? In the past, you find figures were being written. I remember 2003 elections, more voters than the population of uh, adult population in Auguste, uh, the result declared, uh, Waziri is still alive. He wrote in this day newspaper in 2003, now, where did we get the figure? And the figure did tally. So when you, the, you, when you talk of elections, you, you cannot talk of a totally clean. I agree with you. Look at uh, George Bush in, in his election in Florida. His brother was governor in uh, Florida. His election between him and Al Gore. They rigged it in Florida. You know that very well. In, uh, on the side of uh, uh, George Bush. So... I'm not saying that there is a totally clear election. When you talk of Oro, it's a cultural issue. Oro happens in the night. Okay, if they, if, they, if, they, if they did Oro issue in the night, at daybreak, the next day people should not go out. Oro doesn't come out during the daybreak. I agree with you. But at the same time, I remember when I was governor, some outside resistant Oro people in Shagabu. And it became a riot that houses were burned down. When you are within a, a, a group of people, respect their culture. Oro comes out in the night, doesn't come out during the day. If Oro came out in the night on the eve of election, did Oro come out on the day of election? <clears throat> well, sir, before we go, just uh, one quick thing. President Tinubu, when he was campaigning, talked about Emiloko, we became almost uh, an ideological statement. And he said, Hello for Kambale. In other words, he reassured the people. But one year later, only yesterday, there were protests in parts of Nigeria, specifically at the Kejaunda Bridge. People protesting about economic uh, hardship. What do you have to say to those Nigerians who in Lagos are saying, and that uh, they, are no, they, they, they don't think they should for Kambale? Uh, you know. What do you say to those Nigerians, and including labor, well, saying they need living wage? I say to them, no, I, I, I say to them that I sympathize with them. I cannot lie to you that I don't know that they're being by everybody. They're being, they're being by me. But uh, I will always say after darkness, there will be a great dawn. We should all join together to walk towards a greater dawn tomorrow. Um, uh, well, I, I sympathize with the president himself. You see, he, he, he's going through what we went through in 1999. When we were elected, we were invited to a meeting of Afeli Feli, and where we were instructed to go and declare free education immediately. The day, as soon as we are sworn in, we should declare. And I said, no, I will not. Because I said, I wanted to know what is there in the government. By the time I got to government, I found that the military left me with nine months salaries of pay to to look at government workers, six months salary of pay to workers in Ogu State, could I have declared free education? You see, he, 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 I think he didn't wait to study the situation that he was going to be on, on ground. He got into government to realize that the situation was much more serious and terrible than he thought. Well, thank you very much, sir, for joining us on the morning show. But I'm not too sure that other people will agree that you are part of the Ebing Power. Uh, group, <laughs> you know, they will understand that. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if, you know, if you know my expenses now, what, what, is, what is costing me to, 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 to leave? I came to Abuja yesterday and uh, I had to pay uh, 680000 I mean, I had 860000 for my ticket and my uh, chief detail. 
I mean, you, you, can, you can imagine. Close I'm not paying a million to come down to Abuja. So wow. it be, be part of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, sir, for joining us on the morning show.